In this video, I want to talk a little bit about a comparison of prokaryotes and eukaryotes in transcription in terms of their promoter regions and their transcription machinery, which is basically just their RNA polymerases. So in prokaryotes, their promoter regions have three specific thematic regions. Those regions are the negative 35 region, the negative 10 region, which actually has a specific name. It's called the PribNow box. And the third region is the plus one region, which is the transcription start site. Now, the eukaryotic promoters are a little bit different. They have really sort of one primary uh, thematic region, and that is the Tata box, which is a region filled with T's and A's. And it's actually between the negative 36 and negative 24 regions. These negative numbers imply that they're more upstream. The positive number implies that it's downstream. You'll notice I put stars by these, by the Tata box and the negative 10 region with the Privna box. And the reason why is because those are very AT rich regions. But they have a lot of A's and T's, and that's actually sort of uniform among all sorts of genes. And that makes sense because you would expect a promoter to have a sort of theme that the RNA polymerase can continually be attracted to. Because these promoters, keep, like I mentioned in the other video, the RNA polymerase has a high affinity for them. And again, the reason for that is because the promoter regions determine where transcription starts. And so RNA polymerase needs to go there. It needs to go to the promoter, or at least somewhere in its vicinity. So now let's talk about the transcription machinery of each of these, the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. When I say transcription machinery, I'm really just talking about the RNA polymerase, the enzyme that actually makes the RNA. So in prokaryotes, they really only have one RNA polymerase. They have one RNA polymerase. Eukaryotes, they have three. Okay, so let's focus on the prokaryotes first. In prokaryotes, they have this thing called the core enzyme, which consists of a few different subunits. Those subunits are two alpha subunits, a, an omega subunit, a beta unit, and a beta prime unit. These, un these subunits make up the core enzyme, and the core enzyme of the RNA polymerase is constant, which means that any time RNA polymerase or is going to work, or any time there is a specific sequence that needs to be transcribed, all of these subunits will be there all the time for sure. Now, this core enzyme is added to this sigma subunit. Now, this sigma subunit is variable, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in just a moment. But together, if you put this core enzyme with all these subunits, with a specific variable sigma subunit, what you get is this thing called a holoenzyme. And so that's basically just the core enzyme and all of its subunits with the sigma subunit attached. Now the sigma subunit is variable. So now what is the sigma subunit? There are a bunch of different sigma subunits. Okay. Now these sigma subunits, what they they are dependent upon the gene being transcribed. You'll have maybe this sigma subunit number one for this gene and sigma subunit number 387 for this other gene. I'm not really exactly too sure about that, but I know that the, the different su sigma subunits are used for different genes. It depends on the gene being transcribed. So what is the purpose then of the sigma subunit? What it does is it aids in binding the gene and then it aids in starting transcription off. So it aids in binding the gene and starting transcription. This core enzyme needs a little bit of help. It needs a little bit of assistance from a sigma subunit in order to bind the promoter region before it gets started with transcription. So once a few nucleotides are added, the sigma subunit hops off. It leaves. And what's left is the core enzyme. So the core enzyme will then continue polymerizing until termination. Okay. 
So the core enzyme and the sigma subunit make up the holoenzyme. That whole thing is called the RNA polymerase. Now in eukaryotes, it's a little bit different. They don't have just one core enzyme and then variable sigma subunits. What they have is three different RNA polymerases, cleverly named RNA polymerase 1, 2, and 3. Now, RNA polymerase 1, 2, and 3 each has their own job. So I remember this in a simple way. And because, I mean, that, this is what's going to help me most. I think RMT, like maybe that's a little bit small. R M T one two three. So our RNA is synthesized by RNA polymerase one. That's what RNA polymerase is one. RNA polymerase is one. Its job is to synthesize our RNA for the most part. It synthesizes most of the our RNA in the cell. RNA polymerase two makes mRNA. RNA polymerase 3 makes tRNA. It also makes some rRNA, which is why I wrote most up here. But generally speaking, R, M, T, 1, 2, 3. That's what helps me remember this. In addition to the RNA polymerases, eukaryotes also have these things called transcription factors. Now, transcription factors are little happy helpers, if you will, when it comes to transcription. They are proteins that aid in transcription. That's pretty much a sort of general idea of what they are. So they can be um, a transcription factor 1, transcription factor 2, or transcription factor 3, depending on the RNA polymerase that they're helping out. So if you know the type of RNA being synthesized, then you know the type of RNA uh, polymerase. And if you know the RNA polymerase, you should know the tra transcription factors associated with it. If it's transcription factor number 1, it'll be helping out RNA polymerase 1. 2 for RNA polymerase 2, 3 for RNA polymerase 3. So I wrote this little blank here, and I'm kind of just going to write an X here, because normally these transcription factors are named with a certain letter. For instance, an example would be transcription factor 2D, which we'll talk a little bit more about when we're talking about mRNA transcription in eukaryotes. So that about wraps it up as far as uh, the comparison between prokaryotes and eukaryotes in their promoter regions and their transcription machinery. I hope that video was helpful. One last thing, I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moofuniversity at gmail.com and see the description below for more details. Thank you for watching.